Welcome to the FA Football Forum. This podcast episode was from a series delivered back in 2020 to help support grassroots clubs and leagues. This was delivered on a webinar platform and therefore may not make too much sense unless you've got the documentation to hand, all of which is available within the description below. With this being delivered during lockdown, sometimes the audio quality may differ. Please bear that in mind. But as always, if you've got any questions or you've got any inquiries in particular to this episode or any other episode, please reach out to us by emailing clubsprogram at the FA.com. Please do make sure as well uh, that you pop any questions in the chat. I'll be across the chat this evening. I'll look to collate as many chats as possible and share them with Jeff and Charlotte throughout the presentation. The slides, presentation recording and any relevant resources will be shared with you after this evening. Um, and again, please don't hesitate to pop your questions in the chat and we will look to get them answered by either myself, Charlotte or Jeff. Brilliant. So what are we looking to cover this evening? Hopefully you are all on the webinar for marketing. Um, if you have joined us for any other webinar that isn't marketing, um, it might be a good opportunity to stay and learn. Um, if you don't want to, please do sign out because this is all around marketing. Um, we're looking at this evening, the ways in which you um, can communicate during this crisis. Really important not not communicate um really important that we share the right messages uh, with those individuals that are a part of your club members players um spectators etc look at why marketing is in, important for a football club how to do marketing well who can help you guys drive marketing in the future and how marketing looks and performs when it's done right just um just a quick reference point really to some of the key pieces of information we do have at the FA uh, everything that Charlotte and Jeff will talk about this evening um, is fantastic I would just ask that you make sure it's all kind of checked and underpinned by some of our safeguarding resources so there's a whole host there from online tips around kind of keeping football through the virtual world keeping it safe keeping it safe for not only yourselves as a club but also those that obviously you're interacting with um, be it players parents coaches also some measures around how you run websites and social media platforms i know charlotte will talk around all the top tips but these are obviously some really good reference points from a safeguarding perspective because that's just as crucial as as getting the the right messages out there we need to obviously make sure that they are all underpinned quite rightly um by safeguarding and more importantly you guys as a club or league are, are safeguarding yourselves i'll send all of the relevant links to these resources um as a kind of post follow-up email so you've got them and don't have to search the wonders of uh, the world wide web to find them so charlotte if you could unmute yourself i will pass um the, the controls over to you and let you lead lead the session Thank you, Danielle, and good evening, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to see so many of you on this evening's webinar. And um, firstly, I just wanted to introduce myself. As you can see clearly by the photos that Jeff and I have selected, us marketeers are, are clearly glory hunters, and good marketing will lead to plenty of silverware at the end of the season. But um, I've been involved in football now for as long as I can remember, from playing to volunteering. I've worked at a county football association. I've worked within the professional game the non-league game within men's and women's and youth football. So throughout the slides today, I'm going to be using examples from my experience and um, hopefully you'll all be able to take away different pieces of information that can help you, whether you're from a league, whether you're from a club um, or an academy, whatever your setup, hopefully you'll be able to take away um, lots over the course of this webinar. And just really want to emphasise that this webinar is going to be providing some overarching support around marketing and communications. And what I want to do is introduce you to some of the principles. And we will be going into some more detail, hopefully with some follow up webinars and also be making lots of recommendations for other resources if you want to go away and have a read up. Um, but what I really do want to emphasise is that the suggestions I make and the tools that I discuss are not to overload or burden volunteers. If there's one takeaway from this webinar, it's that with the right amount of resource, focus and teamwork, when marketing and communications is done right, it provides solutions rather than challenges. And effective marketing will aid your club, your league, your 
Academy and help you um, achieve your aspirations within your development plans, whatever shape or form that they may take. So please note when I'm going through the slides, I'm conscious that these are really uncertain times. It's uncharted territory that we're heading in, but I'm also personally aware that not everything I suggest will be right for your organization and nor should it be. You will know what works best for your club and how to focus the time you do have, but there may be some ideas and there may be some platforms that I can introduce you to that might be worth exploring during this time and the foreseeable off season that we do have ahead of us. Um, Danielle, if I could have the next slide, please. Just a little antidote here, really. Um, pop to the high street, not many shops are open. I did a bit of shopping at Holland and Barra, and it was really interesting to me that a business, and don't worry, this is a presentation about football, um, that a, a business that is surviving and able to open up during a pandemic. When I went home and, and was unpacking my shopping and I saw the bag, I noticed their strap line online and mobile and in store and that really resonated with me because i just finished um, putting together the slides for today's presentation and the point i quickly want to make is that if you get your online presence right and if you make sure that your club or your organization is doing the business online it really does have a monumental impact on the experience whether it be a parent looking for a club to sign their son or daughter up to whether it's someone looking for their local wildcat center the importance of online and digital marketing nowadays is so important, so much so that even a business that's still able to operate in these difficult times physically highlights it on the packaging it gives its customers. And um, so just a little one there just to emphasize how important it, it, it really is. Um, next slide, please, Danielle. And it would be remiss um, not to mention the current situation that we're in. And communication has never been so important with physical means temporarily removed there's a real focus on digital communication now more so than ever and this webinar is going to showcase ways for you to engage with your stakeholders in the long term but i want to set out a couple of pointers to help you during this um, period and i'm really fortunate that in a couple of slides jeff from bromley fc is um, going to give some examples of how they have marketed um, and done some really creative content during this time because they really exemplify some best practice um, so my first point, don't stop communication. Yes, there are no games going on and there probably will not be for the foreseeable future. But the foundation of the football club and the football league that you've worked on and that those before you have worked on has built a successful club over the years. And many of your clubs and your organisations will be a central part of the local community. And you might not even realise the impact your club has on the social and mental well-being of your players, your coaches. And in fact, it might have taken football's absence for that true picture to emerge. So let me reassure you that now is the time to be communicating. Now is the opportunity to be there for that community. And now is the time to change the tactics of your club's communication. Next slide, please, Danielle. And by changing tactics, I don't mean overhauling what you're doing, because I'm sure a lot of what you're doing is right. But right now, you might feel a pressure of how to get it right. And a lot of that revolves around the tone of your communications. From a branding perspective, this is probably something you've developed already, bringing to life your club um, via website and social media. And whether you're a two or three team club, right up to a 90 team club, um, for the season, you'll be using lots of work and content that people will enjoy. And there's nothing wrong with trying to do that right now. It's imperative to get the tone of voice right, certainly during an international crisis where people connected to your club will be suffering and football can seem like a rather trivial topic. So some things to help you do that right. Remember that your voice matters. COVID-19 related tweets are happening every 45 milliseconds. Social media is a cramped, congested and sometimes overwhelming space, but now is not the time to be silent. It's the time for measured communication and it's completely okay for that communication to be about football. Before this horrible pandemic, during and after, football will be a source of escapist comfort. Use this time to offer such comfort and reassurance to your supporters and those in the wider community. Demonstrate that you want to be genuinely helpful through your marketing platforms. Distraction and levity can be valuable, and as the public faces a tough news cycle, it can be wise to have them with some light-hearted news in good spirit. And Jeff will demonstrate later a focus on saying sharing up in 
content can virtually relieve some people's fears during this really difficult time. And finally, don't forget those who sometimes get forgotten. Being so passionate about football, it's easy to think that there are some who don't actually like the sport. And then, although they might not necessarily enjoy the game, they can and still want to be connected to your football club or your football organisation. More often or not, your club is probably a pillar in the local society. And now is the time to engage and involve those who typically might have been forgotten. And I'm really pleased to be able to hand over to Jeff now to highlight some of the examples that he's been doing with his team at Bromley. Thanks, Charlotte. Now, good evening, all. Um, I thought it would be uh, a miss to quickly, just quickly run through five examples that sort of relate to those five points that, that Charlotte's just made. Um, I think we've inadvertently sort of hit those points without realising as we were doing it. Um, I think point one, remember your voice matters. Um, I think we're all aware as, as football clubs and Canada FAs how many people listen to us. Um, the fact that what we do put out, it, you know, matters and engages with people. Uh, but we also know that that message is uh, uh, more, more easily uh, received when it comes from a player or a manager. Um, and so we, we really took the opportunity, what we felt like we had an audience to communicate with during this period. We're no experts, you know, we, we, we had the advice that everyone else had that was going out on um, NHS and, and stuff like that, the stay at home, the one bit of exercise and that. So we simply thought, what's the, what's the best way to, to play our part in communicating that? And uh, rather than just retweet or, or, or copy and paste the message, we thought, you know what, the players can deliver that. So we had the players and managers in there, uh, when they were doing their one bit of exercise, just drop a short video to us. You know, uh, it was aimed at the fans, wishing them well, hoping that they were staying safe, following the advice and, and encouraging them to do that one bit of exercise. And um, I think a message from the players, from the managers, rather than us just putting out a statement or a comment, uh, I think goes down a, a, went down well with, with, with fans and I hope definitely played its part. Um, Charlotte mentions football being a source of comfort. Biggest thing everyone missing uh, is clearly the three o'clock kickoff on a Saturday and, and going to the football game and being with friends and being with, being with mates. And um, one thing we decided to do was we're fortunate enough to, to film our football games and we thought, why not dig out some great classic games, games that people enjoyed and uh, put them on the internet and stream them. And rather than just upload them and say, watch them here, we decided to uh, schedule them for three o'clock on a Saturday, like 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 we're all used to in our routines um, and to gather around screens and watch it. And um, YouTube had a fantastic facility where fans could all watch it at the same time and comment and chat between each other. So again, it just kept that engagement. It kept people who might've been alone um, talking with other ones, talking with uh, friendly faces and familiar faces. Um, and that went, went down really well. Um, number three, demonstrating your values. We're a community club. Uh, we want to play our part in the community and we had plenty of food, etc., from our games that had been called off at short notice. Um, and obviously we did our utmost to um, redistribute that within the community, whether it's to local residents or whether it's to the uh, food bank. And um, obviously point four, distraction levity, uh, can be valuable. Definitely no doubt that that humour and, and distracting people and giving someone else to, to think about goes down well. And we, we recorded a, a radio show. It sounds a lot more technical than it was. We had our phone, we put it, the audio note on and we recorded a conversation with the manager and assistant manager and fans love hearing from them and we managed to get some old stories out of them and, and almost turn it into a chat you might have in the bar after a game over a pint with your mates when you go oh do you remember when um, and that went really down well we got some really nice messages back from that um, and obviously five don't forget those who can be forgotten uh, over probably a quarter a third of our scene ticket holders are all over the age of 60 65 and I know when, when the measures were coming out early doors, they were almost one of the first, first demographics, locked down, can't go out, can't do this. So um, literally we, we sat there and we just dark, we just phoned them. We, we phoned them all, our manager, assistant manager, um, and we phoned the, uh, those elderly scene ticket holders we had just to check in on them, see if there was um, any food that we were going to donate to the food bank, would it have been used to them, could we drop it round? Um, and we're really fortunate, a lot of them didn't need too much help, but just hearing our voices and knowing that their football club was looking out for them went down so well. And some of the messages we received were, were, were fantastic. And it was just it sort of highlighted us, uh, our important role we've got during this crisis. Like Charlotte said, it's important to, to still play our part. We don't just, just because a football club shut or we're not there on a Saturday, doesn't mean we still have a part to play in uh, people's lives. Thank you, Charlotte. Now, 
Thank you so much, Jeff, and hopefully that gives um, everyone really um, good examples there. And of course, um, these are really difficult times. And whilst it seems like life is on hold, in the future, football will be back. And really, marketing should have been a part of your past. But if not, hopefully this webinar will show you how marketing can be used in the future. And let's start with the very premise, really, of why marketing is um, important for a football club. And I mean football clubs and leagues at every level. We will be hearing from Jeff later on best practice from a national league club. But the basics, when applied well, are relevant no matter what level you're at, no matter how many games you win, lose or draw. It starts with the motive to give it a go, which you've all already demonstrated by signing up to this WebEx. And for those of you volunteering within a charter standards club structure, you arguably have some of the most impactful links into the grassroots game and local community. And that is marketing gold, putting you in a really strong position to build upon your sustainability and grow, which are ultimately two of the primary aims for most clubs, leagues and organisations. And every football organisation, no matter their size, has many different things to consider when they're um, running their operations. I know for certain the simple task of arranging and completing a game, all the paperwork involved, takes a number of hours from dedicated volunteers. So with lots of us struggling to find the time, marketing is sometimes a forgotten player, when actually, if it's done well, it will help your club to run more effectively, increase participation and engagement from multiple stakeholders, attract more commercial partners, and showcase the strengths of your club to the wider community whilst ensuring that longer term stability. If I could have the next slide, please, Danielle. And just quickly, I wanted to outline some terms because I'm conscious, again, we've got a really, um, a lot of tuning in today, which is fantastic. And for some of you, this might be a really introduction into marketing. Some of you might have a bit more experience, but the definition of marketing um, from the CIM is the management process responsible for identifying, anticipating, and satisfying customer requirements profitably. It sounds a bit jargony, it sounds a bit formal, but ultimately that is the premise of how marketing can support football. It's not very trendy to align football with a business, but for those um, who sit on boards and sit on committees and volunteer a lot of hours, we know particularly this crisis is showing to us the importance of sustainability. So again, hopefully over this webinar, we'll be able to share some tips with you to really help you get this through this tricky time and then move forward. Engagement is a term I'm going to use a lot and I want to explain what that means. Engagement is basically when um, a viewer of content that you put out there makes an active movement engaging with your content as opposed to impressions, which is just a numerical figure for the number of people who see your content. Engagement is when someone actually interacts and makes a decision to interact with your content. So there's a distinction there as this webinar goes on. Reach is the term that we use to describe the total number of people who see your content and that is often, from my experience, something that clubs and leagues don't quite realise they have a monumental amount of and significant amount of power. Um, when I joined the Kent Youth League Committee, I was absolutely astounded by the statistics on their website and it was something that the Chief Exec never really even kind of, he had a vague idea about, but then we were able to monetize that. And public relations, again, a bit of a um, terminological, that's not even a word, a bit of terminology there. Um, PR is really important, and again, something you're probably doing organically, um, but it's really important to consider, again, during this time and beyond, how your club um, can build and maintain goodwill within its local community and its target segments. Um, okay, if I could have the next slide, please. So how can we do marketing well? So the, the tools I'm going to introduce you to, you probably use each week, but hopefully at the end of this whirlwind tour, you'll look at these tools with a new tactical advantage. So when it comes to your website and running it more effectively, Danielle, if I could have the next slide, please. I like to think of a website as the front shop of your football club, and it serves a purpose both internally and externally. So no matter why you've tuned in to this evening's webinar, I'm sure a number of the bullet points here will resonate with you. So when you think about your website, obviously you've got those internal aims of publishing scores, fixtures, the real practical points of managing your fixture schedule, integrating with the FA's new systems. And I think that's something to be acutely aware of. I know that the FA is doing a massive amount of work around digital technology and, and creating a digital ecosystem that will ultimately help the game grow and, and take away a lot of the hours that volunteers spend um, doing different tasks. 
and also your website is crucial in terms of taking payment. So again, when it comes to cash flow and supporting a football club, you have that element that you need to consider from your website. But you also have the external factors around raising your club or league's profile, showcasing your teams, promoting opportunities to play, and recruiting volunteers, which I know is a massive challenge to a lot of us. But of course, um, when it comes to website and your different motives behind what you're putting out on your website, quite a lot of them overlap. Promoting sponsors and partners, publishing success stories, putting video and imagery content, increasing brand engagement and growing your database, which is something I will come on to a little bit later on in the presentation. But these are all considerations um, that your website should really be looking to achieve. And if I move on to my next slide around increasing participation and engagement from multiple stakeholders, this really is the golden ticket for clubs. We all want to attract more players and we all want happy stakeholders. So three tips I give, make sure you nail your copy with compelling, succinct and up to date writing. When it comes to keeping your website up to date, there are a few ways of dealing with this. Maybe you could assign some webmasters across your football club. They can come up with a rotor themselves so that on a weekly day basis, someone is keeping tabs on your website and making sure that it's current. And also I would advise that you make sure that your club or league is accountable to itself. Add the website or marketing onto your committee's agenda so it's permanently a part of your planning process. Tip number two, declutter your website. Too much information, yet yeah, that is definitely a thing. And one piece of advice I would give is run a test on your website. Um, come up with some different scenarios of things that a potential visitor would be looking for on your website. And if you can't find that information within three clicks, that would suggest the navigation on your website is slightly too clumsy and something to take a look at in more detail. And finally, be mobile friendly. The average person spends three hours and 23 minutes on their phone. I'm sure we all get those ghastly updates um, telling us our weekly screen stat times and mine shock me on a, on a weekly basis, but it does underline a really important point. And that is to make sure that your website is as good and easy to use on a device, whether that's a mobile or an iPad, as it is on a desktop. And on my next slide, talking about attracting commercial partners. Um, on this point, I think it's really key to consider um, that all of the, the points that I've just outlined will help you attract commercial partners because they exude professionalism. And professionalism is something that marketing is there to promote and it serves all levels and sizes. And that's a point I really want to reiterate. It doesn't matter whether you're in step two, step seven, or you're a grassroots club. Websites are the shop window for you and making sure that your website sells everything about your club is like drawing back that curtain and with every inch you do draw back, there's potentially a really attractive um, offer for a sponsor or local business. And moving on to the showcasing the strengths of your clubs to the wider community, there are a few examples on the screen here of work that um, I've done across different clubs and the first is to consider, does your website display the logos of your sponsors on its homepage? So in the bottom right corner is a screenshot of the Kent Youth League's website, which I look after. And we've got Stagecoach and Nike's adverts on the screens there. Both those adverts are hyperlinked back to our partners' websites. A really simple tip of why that's effective is that come the end of the season, when we want to rene renegotiate and renew those sponsorship deals, because they are very lucrative to the league, we can tell our partners exactly how much website traffic we have um, given to them simply by having them on our homepage and simply by adding their hyperlinks to that. Um, secondly, do you have a dedicated page to your sponsors? So on the top right is a little screenshot from Margate FC's website. And on there, you can see that we showcase who is supporting us. Having a club directory on your website, which showcases your partners to your, your parents and your stakeholders, is a really easy win in terms of getting sponsors on board. And finally, do you promote commercial opportunities? Do you have a get involved page on your website? If you don't ask, you don't get. And on the left there is just a, a screenshot of a commercial brochure that we produced at Margate Football Club, which we keep on our website to help generate inquiries. And moving on to social media, Social media is great when helping your club to run more effectively because it's a free resource to get key communications out to your stakeholders. 
You have a means of control over it because these channels are administered and monitored by your organisation. You can offer good customer service by responding to people. You can look to the website and you can boost traffic all whilst helping to grow your club. If I could have the next slide, please, Danielle. Um, on that note, social media is probably one of the most valuable marketing tools to help grow um, participation and engagement across your target markets. Social media channels, including Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat and Twitter, offer a means to promote your clubs to key groups. And you can use social media to target certain groups, offering them opportunities to play. One key point I always um, discuss with people when they come to me to, for advice with social media is to keep it focused as best as you can. Often people try to be on everything and um, whatever the latest technology is or whatever the trend is, it's about setting up a channel straight away just to be on it. And that's not always sustainable. Identify what works best for your club. And the best way to do that is go away and look at the analytics and the data. Every single one of the platforms I've just mentioned there offers its users free analytics and data. So as soon as this WebEx is over and you log on, you can have a look at those platforms to see how many people you're reaching, to even drill into the detail of their gender and age, and that information is really useful. And of course, don't forget the power of um, simply asking people. I'm sure we're all parts of WhatsApp groups, and when we do get to that point, we can have face-to-face -face communication again. Just ask a parent or ask a member of your committee, how did you find out about that? How would you like to find out about news? Market research is really important when it comes to decision making and it doesn't have to be really complex. By putting the thought and time in, you really make sure that your messaging is right. And one final tip, use photos. Engagement is boosted by over 70% simply by having a post with an image or some video content. So do bear that in mind. And um, if I could have the next slide, please. When it comes to attracting commercial partners, the principle I mentioned when it comes to your website applies equally as strongly on social media. If your website is your shop window, social media is almost like the shopping bag you take away. It's a separate, highly visible part of your brand and your experience. And using social media to follow and connect with partners is really key. That connectivity is what it's all about. These companies and businesses are involved with you because they see value and they see a link into the community. Build those relationships with posts and content that signpost your followers to them. These will keep your current sponsors happy and prick the interest of potential prospects. If I could have the next slide, Danielle, just to showcase to you what this looks like. So in the first instance, we've got Liverpool FC um, going in there with the, the big, big time example. But obviously, um, for Premier League clubs and a lot of clubs at the moment, they have sponsors who are struggling to get their brand awareness because there is no football on our screens and there are no people seeing their brand in at games. So as you can see here, there's an example of one of their sponsors linked with a piece of content. Now, there's no direct correlation between the service that company provides. However, if you look in the bottom left corner there, when I was talking about analytics, you can see that that piece of content's been viewed over 40,000 times. Thereby, Liverpool, even in these tough times, are doing as much as they can to satisfy their sponsors. Alongside that is a tweet that I produced for, for Margate, and it was simply a photo from a match day and um, that we followed up the day after a game just to thank our sponsors, because it doesn't just stop once you've got their money in the bank. We want these people to come back again. Next time we want them to pay for a board and using social media to give them a bit of a shout out is um, really important. And two examples from two clubs um, I'm not involved with, but I am a Kent girl and these two teams are uh, local. Again, just really simple messaging and they both use they have both used images as well, which is best practice because, as I just mentioned, your engagement does go up by a massive percentage when you do so. And you can turn this up a little bit. You can turn it up a notch with your partners by offering benefits to your stakeholders. So imagine posting um, a message on your social media channels with a specific discount code or incentive that's been tailor-made for your club or your league's rewards. So not only are you um, rewarding and recognising your own internal stakeholders and giving your followers a reason and incentive to follow you, um, but you're also boosting your partner's business. So once your club's devised and implemented an offer like that, you can go back to your partner subsequently, monitor and analyse the reach and the conversion figures, and then you've got a really enticing offer for future sponsors as well. And if I move on to the next slide, social media is a platform for showcasing, so it lends itself perfectly to showing the strengths of your club. 
So what I'm suggesting here is using social media as a PR resource. When there is good news, share it. Narrative is so powerful and there'll be so much good news going on in your club or in your league throughout the season. There's probably some really powerful good news going on now during this difficult time. It's just a different type of content that you're used to sharing with your football club. I'm sure everyone on this webinar can think of an example of a truly inspiring act of kindness that someone within their club has undertaken during COVID-19. Use these to power through the tougher weeks and you'll look back and you'll be really proud of the way your club served its local community. And moving on slightly, can you craft opportunities for people? Can stakeholders email their stories to you to share? Perhaps at the start of the season, you can create a hashtag. Um, we did at Margate in this together. We even plastered it at the main end of um, our stadium. Um, because this then means that they have a means of sharing um, stories of success or good sportsmanship or whatever it is. You don't always have to be one driving that content creation. An underrated benefit of social media is users create their own content. We as individuals know that we all engage with brands and companies that we like. And this users generated content does some of the hard work for you. And in turn, it demonstrates to others the diverse breadth and depth of your club's digital reach. Moving on to email marketing. And email marketing can really help your club to run more effectively because with a slick operation behind your club, you should and you probably do have lots of email addresses. So within the GDPR guidelines, stakeholders can opt into email communications for you. And email is a really great way to engage with people. Tailored communications means that you can preempt messages for any type of challenge that you'll get throughout the season. You can promote relevant um, opportunities and communicate key and important messages. This can help elevate everything you do because targeted marketing is going to get you some great results. And hopefully what's becoming clear over this WebEx is that most of the best marketing practices overlap. Email communications grants a club or an organisation even more intimate means of communicating with stakeholders because your recipients have actively opted in. And personalisation is really important here to increase in participation and engagement through e-marketing. You might not have the resource or time to send out weekly or monthly email communications, and that is absolutely okay. With everything in marketing, if it's well thought out and planned, you're on the right track. So to drive engagement, make sure the messaging is right for the right group is vital. What I mean by this is really considering the messaging you want to deliver and who exactly you want to deliver it to. There's no point putting together an email campaign promoting a new Wildcat Centre at your club and then sending that to the boys segment of your email database or sending it to the teams on your mailing list that are out of that age bracket that it's relevant to. So really do consider that. And the ability to attract more commercial sponsors obviously is so important and um, tied in with that really is the ability to land into a land an email into someone's inbox and it's not an ability we should take for granted hence in part why the GDPR regulations came in place a couple of years ago e-coms was arguably being abused by large-scale companies and sales chasing services and any approach like this I would seriously divert you away from and we could have a whole webinar really dissecting the GDPR rules, but there is a lot of guidance out there to help you with the trickier elements and the FA does have a lot of resources as well, which I'm sure we can signpost you to. But ultimately, email can serve to help you cast your net to attract partners. You can consider putting together a really specific campaign asking for financial help. But as is the magic of marketing, position it artfully, perhaps by sending an email highlighting different forms of sponsorship from match day packages with all the highlights and benefits outlined could boost your inquiry numbers. Combining this with some testimonials from your current sponsors, you're already beginning to shape a really strong campaign, giving business owners something to think about. And one tip I always give to volunteers when it comes to showcasing the strengths of their club is good content is imperative, but don't be afraid to redistribute or recirculate that content. It often takes um, time and craft to make sure that you're making the most of it. Similarly, if you're working hard to raise the profile of your organisation within the community, for example, you've written something for the website or a piece in the local paper, share that with your email marketing base, because after all, they've told you that they want to hear from you by opting in. So make some simple commitments of how and when you want to use email marketing. 
whether you're able to commit to a player of the month piece each Sunday evening, or maybe a briefly monthly mail out or biannual email campaign, make sure it includes some of your best content. And moving on to local media. So this marketing tool applies less than the other platforms when it comes to running your club more effectively, but let it not be forgotten that whatever level you're at, whatever size your club, whatever your model is based around, whether it's development or you're part of the football pyramid striving to get into the pro game, good media relations is always helpful. And the local media have to deal with their own restraints. They're not often the biggest of teams. However, they are supremely dedicated to promoting and supporting the local community. The premise of that is even more so as a result of the crisis we're currently in. So if you go away from this webinar and find out the contact details of the sports reporter at your local newspaper and radio stations, I'm sure that now is the perfect time to reach out and build a rapport with them. And promotion is so important for every club, whether you're beginning to set up a senior women's team or want to promote a new initiative around walking football. Traditional marketing, i.e. advertising in local media, is sometimes an unforgotten art. To do marketing well, you want to be fully integrated in your approach and local media offers a link into certain groups you might not be able to reach, but who are still very interested in what your um, organisation is doing. And when it comes to attracting commercial partners, a small tip on this one, look at who is advertising within your local newspaper. If a business is advertising and promoting themselves, that's a sign that they've got some budget and that the local community is an audience they want to talk to. Hence why they have the advert in there in the first place. Football offers a really unique and powerful platform. If you see a brand or business advertising, do your homework, look them up online and reach out. It could be that they fancy amplifying their advertising with a board around the ground or a spot on your website directory or even an email offer tailored to your database. There are so many creative ways of collaborating and once you see your tactics working, it really will drive all of your commercial activities because I think we could all agree that word of mouth is probably the best marketing tool of all. So if you have happy commercial partners, they will become your greatest and most valuable brand ambassadors. And you're probably noticing a pattern here in that the approach on different, different marketing platforms is often the same and it is the same again when using the local media to showcase the strengths of your club. Um, the copy that you use on your website, on your social media or email updates can be tailored for a press release. Simply send that press release to your contacts with a few photos and maybe the invitation to follow up and you might just gain yourself some column inches on the front and back pages. Moving on to partners, because partnership is becoming a really emerging um, theme of marketing. It's something I love because probably like many of you who love sport, I'm a team player and good partners and sponsors are part of your team, so treat them as such. If a business or company is in a position to support you financially, it's highly likely they've got some good business acumen which could help you out. Do they offer a service that could assist you? Could you arrange a contra deal with them that might reduce your overheads? Or maybe you could team up with local creatives to spruce up your ground's entry signage or redesign the club logo that was in, um, in desperate need of a little refresh. Sometimes we need to think outside of the box and it might be that your club has a certain section that needs a boost. So whether that's in financials or in terms of the number of players, working with partners, you can get that external perspective to help navigate towards a solution. And I really do suggest applying strategic thinking from a marketing perspective can often aid you in finding that solution. So, for example, if you've got some funding to run a veterans women's team, but you're, str you're struggling to get into the target market, you've put something up on the website, you've emailed the mums in the club, you've done a boosted post on Facebook and you've made progress, but not enough. Can you turn to partners to help you? Um, could you think outside the box and approach a local coffee spot advertising a contra deal? Everyone who attends their first session takes away a coupon to enjoy a drink after training. And in turn, you'll advertise said coffee shop on social media with X amount of posts, as well as maybe placing a banner on your website for the opening, opening month of that team's first season. You have all of this marketing arsenal in your weaponry, so do go out and use it, do go out and monetize it, no matter how that looks. And when it comes to attracting sponsors, again, I know this is such an important theme. It's something I get asked about um, all of the time. And I think reward and recognition is really, really crucial. Could you look at incentivizing the base of your commercial partners to bring others on board? 
for every partner they invite and then who agrees to come on board to support the club, could you recognise them with a freebie? That can take shape in several ways. It could be free tickets to a game, an advertising board, half a page advert in the Matchday magazine. In the same way we use social media to grow our audience, nourishing those relationships will mean that they grow in the future and the and partners stick around as well because that is just as important as gaining new ones. You want to keep the ones that you've worked so hard to get on board. And partnerships really are a good foundation for growth. From a business point of view, the principles explain themselves and they do apply when it comes to running a football organisation. Working with partners, no matter what their size or reach, enables you to communicate with groups in the community you might not previously have been able to appeal to. So, for example, a partnership with your local Age UK to host coffee mornings in your clubhouse would help not only demonstrate your commitment to the community, but if you then involve your first team players or those from a youth team, you've got a story the local press would pick up on and the makings there to grow a partnership that might appeal to a private company to financially support or build a case for some external funding. Good PR, good content, good practice, all whilst doing some good. And a ball doesn't even need to be kicked. And that is a really key point to make. Not all of your marketing revolves around 3 p.m. on a Saturday or match day on a Sunday. So if I can have the next slide, obviously it's all very well and good and um, these platforms and ideas are all great, but we know that the workforce is stretched. Um, so who can help us get these into action and to improve? And on to the next slide, I've identified a few groups here. Now, firstly, digital tech. It's one of the fastest growing industries and there are a whole host of people who wish to become sports journalists and marketeers. Additionally, during this lockdown time, you probably have a lot of players out of school um, or university, potentially people that are furloughed. Engage with them um, to create some content and to sustain your club's output during this time and drive your audience online. It could ignite a passion that people didn't realise they had and then keep them on board for the future. And then secondly, target groups. Your club and organisation can offer a really empowering platform for young professionals looking to gain experience, and people coming into retirement looking to dedicate some brain power to good local causes. I think if there's anything to be learned from this pandemic, it's how important our interconnectivity is. So reach out and offer those opportunities. But for succinct asks, you'd be surprised who wants to help out. And the third point I think Jeff is going to come on to, because I know the National League and the um, University um, of Football Business have got a really, really good partnership. And it may take a little work up front, but by approaching local educational outlets to attract media officers to your club, and for those of you with charitable arms and community trust, there is also the opportunity to explore apprenticeships. So you can work together to outline a job description and work with those who come forward to get them on the right path, giving them some valuable experience whilst giving you some extra resource. It's um, a real win-win situation there. And finally, don't forget about your county FAs. There are a number of local county FAs running excellent programmes to reward and recognise volunteers, particularly a lot of programmes around young volunteering. Lean on them for support and expertise. And again, if you've got a very specific set of roles in mind, Utilise your county FA to advertise those opportunities, as well as local media and as well as your own channels. So that's just about everything for me. And um, I'm really pleased to hand over to Jeff. I'm so pleased that he is part of this webinar because Bromley are a fantastic example of a football club that has done the business off of the pitch, on it, and marketing has been a real driving force. So hopefully his examples now will give you some practical ideas of, of how it can look. So no further ado, I'll hand over to Jeff. Brilliant. Uh, thank you. Charlotte's no doubt the expert in this field. Everything you've heard and listened to so far um, is, is, is bang on. She knows exactly what she's talking about. Uh, me, on the other hand, um, I'm just going to give you things that we've learned over the over the last, call it my time, probably 10, 12, 10, 12 years. Um, uh, just a bit about me. I, I really hope that you guys can try. I can try and resonate with you guys and you. Uh, we're in similar similar positions depending on where you are in the in the footballing period, etc. Um, I've been a part of Bromley now for almost 15 years. Um, one of my first football games when I was 15 years old. Fell in love with a football club like you do, um, and just absolutely loved it. Um, I volunteered with a football club for probably two, three years, helping out uh, club secretary, um, the program, the website I just started. 
Um, and I was fortunate enough when I was 18 to uh, be given a, a full-time uh, office job, as it were. Uh, full-time job, but not full-time pay. That didn't exist back then. Um, but we did start that journey back in the Ryman uh, Division 1 South uh, many, many years ago. Um, and we're uh, with crowds probably similar to the amount of people listening to this uh, webinar. Um, and, you know, all these years later, we find ourselves at the, the pinnacle of non-league football and, and, and you know, in a, in a fantastic place that we... we we couldn't have imagined 10, 15 years ago. So uh, it's been a fantastic journey. So I think we're really, really proud of. And a um, big thank you to Danielle and Charlotte for allowing us this opportunity to, to sort of share our, our knowledge and what we've learned. Um, I'm currently a general manager at Bully Football Club uh, in charge of media and communications, uh, but like always, still sort of jack of all trades. <laughs> Um, so uh, just a quick reminder, really, what, why are we here? I, I'm sure it's the same for um, the rest of you guys, the football clubs out there, the county FAs uh, and the leagues, etc. Um, it was just important, I think, to, to reiterate this. So, so we're all on the same wavelength. Um, at the end of the day, we're just custodians of our football club. We're fortunate enough to celebrate our 125-year anniversary recently. Um, and our ultimate goal on the job uh, throughout all of this is to make sure that we have a football club in 125 years' time. Um, we're, we're not going to be here forever, you know, it's important that we play our part and really help uh, push the club on. Um, in order to do that, we did have to try and get something down on paper, try and have a strategy so we, we all know what we're pushing towards. We all want to win on the park, we all want to get promoted and we want to play our part in the community, but what does that actually, um, actually look like? So our main uh, goal down on paper was to make the football club uh, financially sustainable, community focused and playing at the highest level possible which i'm sure there aren't too many of you out there would disagree is exactly uh, the same as your aims of your football club um, we decided we were going to achieve this by developing homegrown academy talent um, actively engaging with our members supporters and the wider community um, delivering a financial performance a viable one within a business strategy um, and investing in our employees our academy i'll grab the next slide um, so how we view marketing, um, I think Charlotte made a good point. A lot of people uh, may get a bit fearful when we hear business words and marketing terms related with our beloved football club. Um, but as you all know, sustainability is so vital and, the, and marketing, the business plan, everything is part of that. So I uh, can't stress how important that is. Uh, the way we look at it, uh, three main elements really, um, attraction, affinity and loyalty. Um, whether you're, you're a youth club looking to uh, field more teams, um, attract enough players to uh, field teams, etc., uh, attraction plays a part for all of us. Uh, in order for us to survive, in order for us to grow, in order for us to be here another 125 years, we need more fans. We need that next generation of supporters. Um, after that, once we have attracted them, um, we want to be able to um, retain them. We want, we, want, we want to give them a reason to stay. We want to give them a reason to... Uh, Ultimately, we'd, we'd love as many people as possible to feel um, as proud and uh, committed to our football club uh, as we all do and as our volunteers do and everybody who helps out with the football club. So that's the ultimate goal. The people that we're attracting, can we get them to feel about our football club the same that we do and have that, have that amount of passion and care for it like we do? Um, and if you can do that, then comes loyalty. Um, and with loyalty, you've got um, uh, an increased fan base, you've got a core group of, of young players that can take your team through the age groups um, and with that loyalty you almost uh, it's a big sense of responsibility but you can gain a bit of uh, forgiveness as well because when we are trying to grow and we're trying to do new things we may make, make mistakes we may try and, and, and sell something that we shouldn't have done or we may try and change uh, something that cannot be changed it shouldn't have been changed it's always been like that for 25 years but as long as you've got that loyalty and, and you've earned that trust with people, they'll forgive you and it allows you to experiment and continue. Um, and what, what, what do we actually need to do in order to, to try and hit those three goals um, and the bigger picture? Uh, as far as we see it, it's obviously we've got to promote it, whether it's our fixtures, uh, teams that need players, um, a soccer school, whatever it is, we've got to be able to promote it. We've got to get it out there and let people know. Um, telling our story, I think, is so important. It's okay promoting it and, and um, uh, letting people know about opportunities or fixtures. Every, everyone's doing the same thing. Every football club, every business is doing the same thing. Everyone's promoting themselves. So what makes us different? Uh, why are people going to engage with us? Why, why are we interested? Um, 
we do that by telling our story. What makes us unique? Um, I'll come on to it shortly. Um, Sam Wright at Cray, I don't know if he's on, but Cray do a fantastic job. If you, if you don't know that they're the uh, London's oldest football club, then I'm not sure where you are because they, they don't stop banging on about it. Fair play, because it's a fantastic story for them. Um, and easy access. Whatever it is that you're trying to market, promote, etc., to complete that, that cycle of attracting them, getting them to be a part of it, you've got to make it easy for them, whether it's buying a match ticket, whether it's signing up for that soccer school, um, whatever it is, you've got to give them easy access. Um, and on the next few slides, I'm just going to try and explain how, how we've done that. If I could have the next slide. Oh, sorry, yes, social media. Um, so I, as uh, Charlotte referred to already, there's plenty of platforms, all sorts of platforms. TikTok, they seem to come out every other month and you, you try and stay abreast of them and you try and learn them. Um, but really, ultimately, whatever the platform is, it's all very similar for us. We, we've got three key aims. We, we've got a message to get across, so we've got to get it across as simply as possible. Uh, but it's got to be engaged. It's got to catch the eye. It's got to make them stop. People are scrolling through Twitter. You might have a split second of their attention and it's gone. Um, and again, accessible. Whatever it is that we're putting on there, the message, promotion, whatever it is, it's to use. Um, and there's a couple of examples for us over on social media. So when we talk about uh, simple message um, on the right hand side, you see that we're promoting our, our game with Sutton. Uh, for most football people, you'll know straight away it's a match promotion because there's two club crests. So, you know, there's a match going on within the actual tweet. Uh, we've included who we're playing, what competition it is, the date of it. The kickoff time for people who don't go to football and are thinking about the idea, they don't necessarily know it's a three o'clock kickoff. Things that we presume the outside world knows isn't always the case. People don't know where we are. We've included the postcode. Um, and in that tweet as well, we included a link to the tickets. So again, if someone is interested, we've caught them, they're interested, they want to uh, buy a ticket and be a part of it, we've made it as simple as possible for them. Um, we're not you're not always selling when you when you post on social media and put stuff out you'll see the image at the top we talk about engaging content um, very simple our, our captain recorded a little happy birthday message on a, a video for one of our supporters who is on Twitter um, and it's just such a little simple simple gesture literally a, a whatsapp message to our captain a whatsapp uh, video back and we had a that we shared on social media um, that the supporter, so the supporters whose birthday was was absolutely chuffed, and and you, you'll see it had numerous likes from people who just you know appreciated the fact that the club had done something like that. Um, and again, um, engaging content. We've got another example of um, on this day where um, well back in 2007 we won promotion. It was the anniversary recently, and again we we just put up some photos and a very simple reminder of the date, what happened, and, and you leave it up to your fan base then because they'll engage with it, they'll comment on it, and it just starts a conversation. And um, the more online conversation, the more people are talking about you, the more you're obviously out there, the more you're aware, the more their friends of friends are seeing it and going, what's all that about? Um, and it really helps start the conversation. Um, so on the next slide. Uh, match posters. Um, Sounds incredibly simple. Yeah, we, we all know that. We all do match posters. It's not, it's not that difficult. Um, our version of doing match posters was A, um, finally finding somebody that would design a poster for us, nice and brilliant. Um, and then, okay, got to print it, got to photocopy it, often at our own expense. Used to be down the, uh, down the local shop nearby, photocopy it, uh, maybe black and white, depending on the budget. Um, and great, I've got 50 posters now. What am I going to do? I'll go and trudge around the shops, I'll pin them up, I'll pay the post office 10p to put them up and we'll get them up wherever we can. Uh, I turn up at the game on Saturday and a fan comes up to me and we've got a crowd of 300 and the fan comes up to me and says, not really doing a good job of promoting the game, I haven't seen it advertised anywhere. Um, and all that effort that you've done during the week and you feel like you're the only one doing it. Um, I learned that the hard way um, and very quickly I realised that we needed help and I think it's so important to realise that you're, you're not always alone in this and You've just, again, just got to make it easy and straightforward as possible for people who want to help to actually help. Our idea was um, if we could get the match poster to as many people as possible and allow them to put it up in their office, their workplace, their shop, it would really increase the amount of uh, coverage it could get. Uh, and we put a very simple message out saying, uh, we need you, we'd love you, to, we'd love you to help promote our upcoming games and help us to continue to grow our crowds. Um, on our website, we had uh, the poster uh, in PDF format so people could download it. 
print it at home. Honestly, I imagine many people, it was probably at their school or at their workplace, and I apologise to those employees, but, um, and they, they've put up those posters in on their notice boards and, and in their shops and things. And what we encouraged them to do was actually to take a photo to show us where you put that poster up um, and drop us a message on social media. It allowed us to uh, thank them for their support, which always goes down well with them. It's great for them because they feel appreciated, but it also made other fans think, oh, well and we really saw a real um, uplift in, in the amount of supporters that were getting involved and helping with that um, and then we took it a step further um, and actually our sponsors and the companies are actually helping us and sponsoring us and um, we, we asked the same for them we emailed them a poster as you know you can make your poster cover a, a free four game period I know uh, fixture congestion come December and January can change all that around but when you're starting off the season, you've got a real opportunity there of being able to produce a poster that covers a three, four week period. We're not emailing our companies and sponsors every single week uh, with a new poster and bombarding them. But once a month, we're sending them something and they're putting it up. Um, and I think if you have a look on the next slide, um, you'll see a couple of examples of, of what that looked like. And uh, you'll see a message of us thanking everybody um, and just highlight just how many posters were put up in our local area before a game. And we managed to get the train station involved. Um, the local uh, travel agent actually put it on their digital screen. Um, one of our sponsors took a photo of themselves outside of it. And again, it twofold. Fantastic for us. We've promoted our football club. Um, a lot of the work's been done for us but also the sponsors and the companies that have done it. We thank them publicly and those fans have now seen the sponsors who, um, you know, often often fans will look at sponsors as purely a money, a source of income for the football club and that's it. And I think what Charlotte referred to with a directory and trying to get your fans to really use people and engage with people that are supporting the football club, doing the same thing you're doing as a fan is really important. Um, and that, that the, the, Fans being able to see sponsors and companies doing the same thing that they're doing, printing posters, helping promote the club, uh, really worked with us to sort of bring bring everybody a bit closer and a bit more engaged. Uh, if I go to the next slide, um, telling our story, I referred to it slightly briefly with regards to Cray. So important. What makes you unique? What makes you different? Why why my football club? Um, I think is so important, and you've all got your own fantastic stories, um, and and it's you've just got to do your Sharing. It's got to be part of your um, day to day activity of sharing what you do. Um, and you'll find we, we found that what resonates most is those real moments. Um, and I'll come on to that briefly. But again, other things like the on this day um, and goal morning, we started when with the um, crisis and pandemic, we started posting a goal, just one goal, social media, just something that people woke up to. Um, some of them remember the goal. Some of them, some of them, some 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 fans have come forward with a funny story saying they actually missed that goal because they were sitting in the bar at half time and something like. But again, it's great the conversation um, and people are talking about it. And as Charlotte refers to, constant communication on the website, articles, um, email marketing, etc. Uh, if I have the next slide, um, hashtags. Um, I'm sure you've heard of them. I'm sure some of you love them. I'm sure others of you loathe them. Um, it's a really, really strange one. We, we found it incredibly important. Um, everything that you, you want to do, your posters, your adverts, your emails, everything, how can you very quickly and simply explain your story, your purpose, your football club? I, I think previously it used to be mottos. A lot of us would have had a motto in our club crest or quite often it would be in Latin and most people wouldn't understand it anyway. Um, I do think the hashtag is almost that new that new motto. How can you really simply get across? Um, whoever's using that is clearly uh, playing their part in a bigger picture with Margate and, are, and are physically in it with them trying to achieve what they're You at the start because you you almost feel like are we stating that, that we are Bromley? Are is it a bit too uh, is it a bit too out there? Is it a bit too bold from us? But actually, what what we ended up far of our community. We want to be proud of our town. We want to represent it, um, and so does everyone else. So do so do the sponsors. So do the fans. Um, so all the people we're working with as well. It, the hashtag sort of suited everybody and there was an opportunity for everybody to use it to 
tell their story of how they were supporting football club and that and how therefore how they were supporting the town and supporting the people that lived lived within it um and again that physical work is actually done by what you do the mascot opportunities on match days the community community work you do uh, being promoted up the league the stuff you do within the town but if people don't know you they, they don't know any of that they don't know that's your purpose they believe you're another football club uh, who wants to be who have overpaid players and and, and etc so we found that really useful and, and on the next slide um you couple of examples of how it's not just the football club that, that use it. We obviously plaster it everywhere. We've got it on our dugout. I've got it. I've got stickers galore. Wherever there's a space, I'll put it. But um, you can see um, a local sponsor used it in a post recently to um, praise the club for the videos and archived stuff that we were doing. Um, so again, to a fan, you're seeing a sponsor that supports a club using a hashtag that you do, using using the same um same messages as 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 they are they are doing again it helps them relate with each other uh one of our volunteer coaches and um, their whole team done a fantastic video of passing the football to each other uh kicking it over garden fences and virtually uh kicking it between the whole team and again they've posted a video on social media and they've used the hashtag we are bromley um, and again a supporter missing their football uh, made a fantastic photo slideshow of all the games they went to last season and again tweeted it out and used the hashtag we are bromley and again, just helps. It's almost an umbrella for um, the story, the constant story that we're trying to tell. What is Bromley Football Club? What you know? And we really find that that uh, hashtag we are Bromley works really well. For some of you, you might have a really good motto that sums it up perfectly. And if it's short enough, I'd really you know use it as a hashtag. You, you, you'll be amazed how many people want to use it and, and, and feel a part of of something. Uh, if I go to the next slide, please. Uh, the real moments I talk about. Um, I. I believe one of the biggest attractions, biggest niches uh, of our of our level, where even when we're in the Ryman Premier, all the way through to where we are, is um, we're not big time, we're not Premier League. Uh, players are accessible. You feel a lot closer to the action. Um, and when I talk about real moments, I, I talk about uh, the mascot's face in the tunnel when he when he's looking up at the, the, his favourite player. He can't be about to walk out with him, um, or the proud parent on the side of the pitch who's got a smile on their face because they're taking. Of their son who's had a fantastic opportunity to uh, take a penalty on the pitch at half time and be cheered by 200 fans behind the goal um, there's so many nice nice moments like that and, and often we all live in a bubble and we know those nice moments and we know we've got good players and we know that we do really nice things um, but that's as far as it goes we don't how do we share that with a wider world why would anybody outside of Bromley Football Club who's not been to a game know that that opportunity exists or know that we've brought that joy to those people so um, we found that that sort of a real a real niche something that we needed to try and, and document and share um, and hopefully on the next slide if I remember um, yeah again so these are just some um, images from uh, videos and photos that we took of some of the good stuff that we do on a match day which probably would go unnoticed if we didn't take it um we've got the players uh, we've got a young one of our youth teams joining the um uh, first team in the dressing room before a game getting to meet there and we've got um our Raven. again people won't necessarily know you've got a company mascot a fantastic moment there of a parent uh take, taking a photo with their two kids absolutely delighted to be with the uh with the mascot um and again we've got a school trip uh, that were part of a recent match day uh, getting to meet the first team uh, and meet our mascot um, and you'll also notice um, a ginger cat, uh, one of those unique things. We've ended up um, somehow adopting a, a local cat from down the road who's been with us now for eight years um, and is probably a bigger celebrity than most of our players. Fans absolutely love him. Um, I think it's that, again, relation that people have cats at home, the football club's got a cat, it's something else they can relate to. Uh, but again, if we're, not, if we're not sharing any of the fantastic work that we're doing, um, and if we're not documenting it, sharing it, putting it out there, how does anybody else know that we're doing it and how does it become an actual advantage to our football club? Uh, if I go to the next slide, please. Um, yeah, so again, we decided we were going to capture them by photo and video. So great. Just just like the rest of you, I'm on, um, there's only so much I could do. I've got a team sheet at three o'clock. Um, we've invited a local school down. I'm the one that's in the tunnel and got to make sure the players take them one by one, which is a lot harder than it sounds. Um, so again, you feel alone and sometimes you don't feel like you've got enough help. Um, ask for help because there are there are so many people out there, especially um, students who who are who are absolutely 
time for an opportunity to to get involved with the football club and uh, they can do. Um, we're very fortunate with the National League that they've got a, a relationship with UCFB, um, who are based at uh, Wembley, but they've also got campuses up and down the country. So wherever you're uh, tuning in from, um, I'm sure there's going to be something that's going to be within reach for yourself. And whether it's a club, a county FA, or a league, uh, I do strongly advise getting in touch with them because they they have dedicated members of staff to reach and communicate with uh, football clubs and offer opportunities to their students and they have students galore um, and again to give you an example we started by um, paying travel expenses purely as you know it felt like the right thing to do um, and part of the relationship the league actually reimbursed them uh, to the students in the end so so effectively we ended up with two students um, you know we were brief we just said don't know how but we want to capture these real we want to be able to share these with the outside world go for it um, they had their own laptops their own cameras the university provided all as you saw from those photos and those bits of video we managed to capture some really nice moments um, without any any real significant cost to the football club Go to the next slide um, and again, I, I became obsessed with it. I became, I'd been, been with the football club for, for a decade or so. I'd seen so many amazing little real moments, little little moments that, that uh, reminded you why it was all worthwhile, why you got involved, why you were doing it. Um, that I, I would have my camera, I'd have my camera phone all the time. Whenever there was something, I'd try and capture it. Um, and this was our opening day of the season in 2018. We went up to AFC Files. Uh, we were awful. Uh, we lost and uh, we were on the coach back to the uh, train station, uh, I think back to Preston. And as we were off, uh, getting off the coach, um, there were a lot of uh, fans as well that were on the same train back to us. And there was this one little kid uh, who I'm sure hopefully you can see on the image on the uh, top left who uh, was in his Bromley shirt and, and couldn't believe it was a team coach and couldn't believe it was the, these first team players getting off. And, and Jack Holland, our captain, um, introduced, started introducing every single player to him as he got off and I think he shook every single uh, player's hands and, and I couldn't help but I, I had to capture it and we took a very short video and um, I, I spoke with the parent afterwards and, and, and you know double checked all permissions etc and everything like that and I just thought it's something we've got to share you know and I think we put it in a tweet despite the results such a lovely moment because it was you know it was an awful result, awful performance a lot of people made a long journey up there but actually, things that really matter, real life, everything like that, this was such a really nice moment to capture. And it went down really well. We had loads of nice comments from, from people who weren't even supporters of the football club. You know, it felt like a reminder to them why non-league was special, why they wanted to go and watch their local football club. Um, and rightly or wrongly, it got picked up by um, another football in social media, which had hundreds of thousands of followers and stuff like that. And they actually clipped it alongside uh, another clip of Liverpool players getting on the coach um, and they weren't shaking everybody's hands, weren't signing any autographs um, and it was, I think it was seen over almost 300,000 times and poor old Liverpool. I don't, I, I don't obviously uh, condone whatsoever uh, but we were getting so much praise, we had so many messages and uh, yeah, just, just an, another niche moment, something that, a real moment that we, pro we probably see it don't see that it doesn't necessarily exist in the higher echelons of football so again it just helps us highlight our story what made us different uh next slide please um, and again very our story now we do is um, a weekly uh, newsletter and an audio podcast again like charlotte referred to um they they might sound incredibly technical or hard work but uh, especially the email newsletter. Um, there's a very simple program out there, uh, MailChimp, um, and you drag and drop, you copy and paste text, and all that newsletter is, is a replication of everything that we've already done during the week. So it's not another piece of work, it's not another sit down half an hour, what are we gonna put in this newsletter? All it is is a very nice, quick summary of everything we've done already, the stuff we've already put out, the stuff we've already created, um, because not all fans will check your website every single day, and, and this gives them a really handy, um, useful, useful summary of everything that you've done in that week. Um, and the audio podcast, uh, hand on heart, started with a drink after a game, uh, getting our phone out, putting the audio note on, and purely having a conversation about the week that's just happened, everything that we've done, the good and bad. Um, and it was a really nice, informal way of uh, listeners getting to know, getting to know the people actually behind the scenes and a manager a bit more and that informal touch. And that's worked really well in our, in uh, growing our, our relationship between everybody. Uh, if I could grab the next slide. 
uh, partners and sponsors work exactly the same as what you're trying to do, whether it's your fans, whether it's um, uh, youth players, whether it's teams, whatever, whatever you're trying to do, the attraction, affinity and loyalty uh, applies the same to them. Um, it's exactly the same. We want to attract them. We want them to care, genuinely care about the football club like we do and really feel a part of it emotionally. And we want them to stay. So all of those three things apply. Um, and it's great. You've attracted them. You've got them on board. So they want to give you money. What are you giving them? Um, advertising board. We all love an advertising board up in the ground and it's a great place to start. Uh, but potentially that's seen once a fortnight, once a week. What else have you got? What else can you can you sell them? What else can you give them for the package? Well, luckily, if you've been doing your marketing and telling your story as you go, uh, you'll be amazed you've actually already got something out there that you can align them to. So let me see the next slide. So all those things that we were doing already, the uh, videos that we were putting out, uh, the photos of our matches, our mascots, the podcast that we were doing, um, the soccer school we've already been doing, all of them we were able to align sponsors and local companies to, and companies wanted to be a part, uh, a part of that and align to that. You know, more people will watch the, the video and the highlights of the game than will attend the fixture. So it's almost, you know, of more value to that company and that sponsor than the board they've got up with they've got up within the stadium. So it's really, that's worked really well for us. And, and like I say, the more and more you're marketing and telling your story, the more and more people want to be a part of that story, put their logo, put their branding towards it. And we found that a really useful way of um, increasing sponsorship within, uh, within companies we've already got. There's only so many boards you can fit in your ground. Um, and hopefully if you're doing it well, you're going to get to that, that capacity. So having something else to align it to is, is valuable and and hopefully you're doing that already by telling your story uh if i'm the next slide please um and again just to, to just to rewind all the way back now um by telling your story by capturing it by documenting it by doing all that you're ticking so many boxes you uh, you inadvertently whether you meant to do it or not you've given your sponsors that have spent money with you um some fantastic exposure without even realizing it their branding is appearing on the shirt um, some of the metals are our shirt sponsor got seen by 350,000 people purely because we decided to document a lovely moment where the, the kid was being met and greeted by all the first team players. Uh, the sponsor of the mascot, again, a lovely moment we've, we've captured, but that sponsor, because I assure you, the content that you, you're, you're putting out, you'll be looking at as a football fan going, that's lovely, that's great, it's really nice. Your sponsors will be looking at all of your content going, where's my logo? Is my logo that oh there's my logo oh wow that's fantastic um and so yeah just by telling your story and, and doing doing this you, you you're killing two birds with one stone and, and you're, you're ticking a lot of boxes if i go to the next slide please and again just very briefly to touch on easy access like i say you've done you've you've done the job you've managed to promote something well you've managed to get them through the door you've got to make it as easy as possible for them whether it's buying their ticket online Honestly, when we first tried the online ticketing, it was such a change. There was a cost, there was a charge to it. We actually ended up deciding to make it cheaper online, even though it cost us. And it will seem like a lost leader for a, for, for a period of time, but it will be the best thing you ever do because making fans buying their tickets in advance is another form of commitment from them. So when it does snow on that Saturday or it does rain and it's absolutely awful, they've spent their money on the Tuesday or the Wednesday beforehand they are more than likely to attend if they don't you have their money if they do you've still got the secondary spend because they've decided to come to already spent their money and again your soccer schools your youth teams and registrations all those things if you make it simple and easy for them so that when they do attend they come through your door it's welcoming it's simple it's easy you're going to get that affinity you're going to get to that loyalty stage where you've made it as easy for them there's absolutely no reason for them not to keep coming back uh, if i go to the next slide um, so why does all this matter? Why, why are we doing it now? We don't, we don't have any soccer schools on. We don't have any fixtures to promote. Uh, we've got nothing to sell. Uh, why, why are we doing it now? Why, why are we wasting all of this time? Why are we marketing? Why are we posting comments, content, etc.? cetera? Um, well, um, on the next slide, hopefully, sorry if I bring it up. Um, for us, it's for this. Uh, we got an email uh, last week, uh, which absolutely blew us. I hope some of you want that why it's important to carry on. Um, hello, Bromley FC. I'm emailing you about the possibility of me getting a season ticket next season. I understand, given the current circumstances, it may be 
may not be possible to plan ahead for the new season at this stage. However, I'm so, so impressed with the way you've stayed connected with your fans. And even though I only went to a handful of games last season as a Chelsea season ticket holder, I was so impressed with the atmosphere and the match day experience. I've not been impressed with Chelsea players' decision not to take a pay cut. I've known for years the Premier League players aren't in touch with the real world, but this hurt, hurt me and led me to decide, as painful as it is, I won't be attending their matches. Not only am I a Chelsea fan, but I'm a football fan and have been for 40 years. Bromley FC is my local non-league club, and I've decided that I'd rather give my money to you guys and girls and support my local team, which is only a short bus ride away. Thank you for making your fans feel valued, for keeping them in the loop and making us feel a part of the club. I feel more wanted and valued at Bromley FC than I do at a club I've been supporting for 35 years. I look forward to hearing from you, Maxime. You can imagine, absolutely blew us away. For us that, that believe in what we're doing and, and why it's important, it was a massive, massive tick, a massive seal of approval. Um, and, and also probably for, for, you, for the chairman that are out there or for the people who have the, uh, the fierce chairman, it's a season ticket sale as well. So um, it's, uh, it's uh, kill, again, killing the two girls with one stone. But again, just hopefully that, that really summarises what, why it's so important and, and, and why I really do hope that you guys keep going for all of this. Um, in summary, you are what you put out. If you're not putting out anything, you're not in people's minds. People aren't aware of you. So, so please, please do always bear that in mind. You, whatever you do, whatever you're doing, the fantastic work you're doing within your football club, if, it's not, if you're not documenting it or sharing it, um, no one else is seeing it um, and, and it's not going to be of any benefit, you know, it's not going to be as beneficial for you as it can be. Um, I've waffled on quite a lot there. Um, I hope that's been of some use. Um, please, please do feel free to email me or get in contact. I'd love to um, share anything and, and good things we've done, bad things we've done. Um, I, I'd really enjoy to, to share it with like-minded people um, and hopefully we'll do that as part of the Q&A after this. Um, right, how do I unmute myself? Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff. I found myself nodding away and making so many um, notes there. Um, can everyone hear me now? Good, I think I'm back. Sorry. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, like I said, I was making loads of notes there, really invaluable. And, and this point I made at the very start there how marketing can be gold. And I think that email coming in your inbox just unifies why we do everything and just quickly a point to make out that the points that Jeff was making there about attracting and building affinity and loyalty that applies at a national league club as much as it does a charter standard team trying to get more youth players trying to attract youth players and keep them from an under 13s up to the age of under 18s and the point about ticketing and e-commerce again is really important for charter standard family clubs out there, youth teams out there that really want to build their infrastructure and build their finances. And I think hopefully we'll be going to be doing a follow up webinar around commercial and driving sort of finances through marketing. But um, Jeff, thank you so much to be kind enough to share all of that best practice with us is amazing. And finally, because I really, I really want to get to people's questions, some five practical tips from me. If you can go away from this um, webinar and add marketing to your committee agenda so it plays an active part of your future, that would be amazing. Look at focusing on your social media channels. Don't feel like you need to be on everything. Go away and have a little look at those analytics and commit to those platforms and doing them well. And use um, scheduling tools. Again, I think we're going to be following this up with some more work around social media, but there are scheduling tools out there so that you can keep your communications consistent without having to be permanently attached to your mobile phone or your desktop and slave away even more hours that we don't really have to, to volunteer our time. And don't be afraid to ask for feedback across social media and, and whether it's face-to-face -face via WhatsApp, use surveys, polls, questionnaires and, and be creative. Um, it's, it's a simple one, but marketing is really fun and I think Jeff has just illustrated there what an amazing impact it can have both on and off pitch so i didn't leave any of my contact details but um would love to hear from every, anyone as well and uh, maybe danielle can share them afterwards but i'm not sure if we, we've had any questions at all danielle i've just been on the on the chat charlotte a few kind of uh, general questions have, have come in there um just uh i know you mentioned as a as a, as a summary uh, around 
how some of these marketing concepts, tools can be be used for youth. Obviously, you've got a fantastic knowledge in and around the the Kent Youth League, and and I know that you operate the the social media and marketing for those guys. Have you got any top tips um, for anyone that is operating maybe within a, a youth only club or pulling from some of the experiences or content that you deliver on your social media channels that might be of, of use to those that are maybe just operating youth clubs on the call? Yeah, of course. So I think all of the principles that we've discussed can be applied to youth football. And one, if I was to kind of break it down, I think the tips that I would give is at the start of your season, when it comes to that registration time, um, get as much information as you can in the sign-ups in terms of consent and making sure that all your safeguarding is up, um, up to scratch. Youth football, I probably found it easier to attract partners to the Kent League than I have the women's teams that I've worked at and I think partly because the content is just so powerful and unique so if anyone wants to go away and for the Kent Youth League website and then look at our Instagram page so when I joined the committee one of the things the CEO said to us was we have so many sort of things to think about from a legal perspective from a safeguarding perspective I don't want to set up a Facebook page because you can just imagine sometimes the challenges of comments and stuff like that um, but one thing I did suggest to him was to get an Instagram page. The simple premise of us having that Instagram page is to share content from the games because actually some of the most engaged groups with that league are the parents and the players themselves. We know they're on those channels. We know they want to see that content. And because we've got their consent um, from their sign-up forms, but also we um, engage with trusted photographers who are all CRC checked, they have Kent Youth League, um, they have a Kent Youth League branded coach. They also carry the ID card with them. Um, our league secretary emails those clubs in advance, telling them the photographer is planning to come along. So that all the parents and everyone like that. So the content is completely legit. It's ours to therefore use. And then I think we we had our we started our Instagram channel in July, and we've got way over fifteen hundred likes on that already. But not only that, the content is just, it, it's so, I talk about engagement, the engagement and the likes on that is so high because that audience is really um, so key to us. So then when it comes to attracting sponsors, and I talk about the number of impressions we get on Instagram alone, all of a sudden they want to be tagged in some content and they want to be involved. Um, secondly, I think branding is really important when it comes to youth football. Um, I think younger consumers are just as um, commercially sort of savvy and branding and things like that makes a real difference. And one thing you have, if you're involved with a youth football club on this call, you've got your market research there and the youth can be a really unique way of driving what you're doing. So why not get your youth players and your youth set up involved with what you're trying to produce? Can they be involved with helping design your kit? Can they be involved in designing a new logo? Because what you're doing then is you're empowering those ideas, but also secondary, you're increasing your chances of commercial revenue. So I work for a football, I do some freelance for a football academy, and we've just gone through the process of doing exactly that. We've put five different designs out and we've let the players pick themselves because they're giving us those ideas of things we might not have thought about. But then when they go on sale, they've got a sense of ownership and like, Jeff was talking about brand affinity is so important, particularly in youth football. You really want them to love the brand that is the football club that they play for. Um, so yeah, use that market research and then just don't be afraid to engage with your players as well. If you've got the consent and if the parents are happy to be involved, why not um, get them to record some content at, content at the end of the game? Like all of your coaches will be really well drilled on safeguarding and welfare. You will be as well. So as long as you're within those all of those um, confines, you'll be really successful. And again, the content doesn't have to be really sophisticated. Jeff and the setup at Bromley is a stellar example, but you might not have the means of doing that. One piece of content that worked really, really well for me at a club that I worked with was literally, I had obviously all the safeguarding was in place, all the consent was in place. I literally um, gave the player, the captain, my smartphone to record a selfie of him and the team. They absolutely loved it and the content was brilliant because it just reflected everything that the football club was about, giving, again, user-generated content a go as well. So sorry, Danielle, that's really rambling, but I want people to know that obviously this can be applied to any type of the game. 
Yeah, no, it's brilliant. Right. And I think, uh, two things that I got from that was consent. So let's get the, the right consent, which clubs should be doing as, as a, a, a general practice protocol anyway. And that will then allow you to know how you can work um, and use marketing with your with your young people. But also, like you said, Charlotte, more importantly, get them engaged. It doesn't necessarily need to be... Um, for some of the examples uh, Jeff gave as, as, a, as an example, um, in terms of the poster creations, getting your youth to create your, your future posters of wanting players of your, of your next fundraising activity. So um, certainly aspects can be, be drawn between the two um, from a, both a, a youth perspective and, a, and an adult perspective. The questions are flying in, Charlotte, so I'll try and, um, try and pull a, a few more across to yourself. Um, one from from Lewis. Uh, it's just asking for top tips from from nas for national league, uh, national league system leagues. Uh, so maybe some some league tips. Maybe just top two. Um. So sorry. This is top tips for a league. Yes, for a league. Those that are offering. Um, okay. Um. So I guess it really depends on what what your aims are. Um. For a league, whether you're looking to kind of, um grow your following on a particular platform but again I think it really comes down with the tip I gave for the youth teams really looking at who you're wanting to target so I'm imagining for a league your key stakeholder groups are your clubs so being able to kind of throw a spotlight on them occasionally help be a helpful platform for them to amplify their good news stories and, and their good news messages as well particularly in, con uh, in lockdown um, everyone's struggling for content so maybe reaching out and engaging with them and helping like tagging them in content as well can be be quite useful again it's something that we've um, done a lot at the Kent Youth League we've always made a point of saying to our clubs we are here to help communicate your good news stories so a recent example this week one of the clubs um, received some emergency funding through the Sport England um, initiative so they sent us um, a press release so they're, they're following the practice that i recommended to you guys they sent me a press release i just had to copy and paste it put it on the website and and tag it into um social media because i think as a lead you do sort of serve that purpose as well as being a custodian of your own brand you're there to support the clubs that are part of your membership brilliant thanks charlotte great answer um and I think that probably answers uh, one of Dan's questions. Dan's DLC said he's uh, potentially, or a she, could be a she, Dan, um, potentially struggling for content um, as we're kind of relatively new, uh, looking for kind of things to keep their youth teams engaged with um, from a content perspective kind of while we're in this current crisis. I know you've mentioned obviously around sharing good news stories, um, I guess sharing some of... Um, the, the different kind of funny challenges we're seeing out there as well and trying to engage players and, and coaches in that way. Is there any other tips you've got, Charlotte, in engaging uh, content during this? Uh, I, I, like I made the point in the slides, user-generated content is brilliant because you don't necessarily have to put everything into it. Um, so I get the impression there it's a case of not only coming up with the content but engaging individuals on a bit of a journey with you because you're a new football club. Hopefully I'm getting the understanding of that. How about as an idea with the parents and the coaches creating a WhatsApp group and maybe doing like, I think even Jeff, um, this is probably again another bit of best tips from Jeff, I think they're doing an end of season presentation. Could you do a virtual end of season presentation that involves all of those players, all of their coaches and the parents together and ask each of them to produce, um, whether it be a drawn picture or something like that, um, that they can bring to this sort of virtual end of season ceremony and then send that image to you and then you can put it on Twitter and again I'm, I'm really conscious of the safeguarding, um, safeguarding rules here but you can then tweet this is Josh's moment of the season drawn and you don't have to say their second name obviously there's no image of them going up online um, but that's a really good way of doing it and, and using communication tools like Teams, like WhatsApp, to get your parents on board and then following up their suggestions. I think that's really important as well because it has to be a, a, a really good dialogue. So that could be a way of, of doing that. Um, and again, referring back to the hashtags, um, encouraging, defining a hashtag, which again, they, your players could decide 
what the hashtag for your club's going to be, but then saying to the parents, oh, do make sure you tag us in that, do make sure you share that content, make sure you use this hashtag, and, um, and then I think you'll probably find organically that the content numbers will increase and the parents and the players will really enjoy being part of something fun about their football team. Brilliant. Great stuff, Charlotte. Um, we've got a few more coming. Um, I think I'm going to keep Chris Murray waiting a little bit longer just because he's asked the question, how do we gain sponsorship um, as a league, not as a team? And I know that we're going to look at marketing and, and the ways of using marketing to generate income um, in a few weeks time. So uh, I'm not going to give away any answers yet, Chris. Uh, that is more of a, an incentive for you to join our next webinar. Um, Steve asks again around kind of the use of Facebook paid posts. Uh, and again, Charlotte, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're going to discuss kind of those types of topics next week. Um, so again, Stephen Harris, sorry, um, we are going to discuss that next week. So please do join us then. Um, there's a few more just coming in now. Um, just having a look. Uh, Ian, Ian's asked how easy it is to get in touch with a local college uh, to get them to support kind of promotional videos, etc. I think Ian, first point of call, Charlotte, I hope you don't mind me, me taking this one and, and please do jump in if, if necessary. But I think that the first point of call, Ian, is to, to have a chat with your local county FA. Um, they should have good connections with local colleges. Um, and at least have individuals that know the right people in those colleges. There are changes in the education system uh, where there are T levels coming in, where there's a greater emphasis for young people to get out into, into the workplace and, and do some kind of practical learning, practical thinking on the job. Um, so there'll certainly be kind of budding students that are, are looking for some types of, of, of projects to support their their education so my, my first point of call and recommendation would be to, to have a chat with with your county fa um, i think then alongside that is, is have a clear scope of, of what you're actually requiring um, and what maybe skill sets that individual um, from a college might be able to gain from delivering something for you uh, you obviously then need to just liaise with the college around um, safe work and all of those types of bits, health and safety, etc. But they would be certainly my top two. Have a chat with your county FA and, and have a clear uh, brief of what you would potentially like that student or students to do. Charlotte, what does that, how does that sound? Yeah, I think it's spot on there, like kind of what I mentioned in, in the webinar is it might take a couple of coffees, it might take a few meetings up front, but if you find the right um, sort of college and you find the right connection it can be really really fruitful and like you said danielle county affairs are there they've got some really really good contacts as well so um i think that's really useful um advice to to go away and follow up particularly at this time because obviously um quite a lot of us have a little bit more time and our workload isn't as intense as it, it normally is um so it's a good opportunity to reach out to people and and have those discussions and also really to emphasize as well about like I was saying, sometimes there are overlooked groups and there are a lot of retired people as well. Um, so not necessarily always colleges, but it can be sort of retired groups, retired business people that really, particularly if you're a youth team and a family charter standard, that really want to lend their expertise. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd look at them as well. Sorry, just to add to that as well. I mean, you may have in within your club, uh, I'm not sure of the makeup, but you may already have these young people that have an interest in it are already doing something within college. So probably reiterating one of Charlotte's points, really look at who you've got already in your current membership. And I don't mean membership as, as those necessarily walking through your gate, those that are playing, parents, um, carers, whoever is associated with your club, have a chat internally, first and foremost, because I think you'd be very surprised as to who you may already have or who you may already have in the club that might know somebody else so um word of mouth is exceptionally powerful i think um everyone we, we, we're coming to the end now uh, we've we've had some really good questions so thank you very much for your engagement there are lots of uh hashtags coming in the chat now so a, a great uh a great leading from jeff there really around around hashtags so there are a few on there so please do check out each other's hashtags to learn even more from from one another um it just leads me to say first and foremost those that have attended thank you very much for your time this evening i do appreciate it it's, it's another webinar um, i'm sure you've been on many since lockdown but your uh, your input and your attendance in, is, has been uh, 
it's been great so thank you very much again um charlotte jeff thank you very much for for your time uh, the effort that you've put in this to this evening and, and the prep that you've done and just a reminder that we will be looking at how to use social media effectively next Wednesday. So honing in a little bit more on some of those platforms that Charlotte mentioned earlier and that Jeff is obviously quite rightly mentioned and more importantly uses. So we'll be exploring those different types of, of platforms, but ultimately as well to look at their functionalities and how we can help save you, uh, the wonderful volunteer team, some, some of your time. But just leaves me to say thank you very much, everyone. Stay safe and enjoy the long weekend. Thank you for tuning in to the FA Football Forum. If you like this episode and you want any more information, please visit thefa.com forward slash clubs and leagues or email clubsprogram at thefa.com If you want a monthly dose of this content be sure to search the Grassroots Football Hub on YouTube or find In The Box on your favourite podcast provider. This is the podcast supporting grassroots clubs and leagues be the best places to play and enjoy the game.